I didn't want to own anything anyway, and neither did you, or anyone, apparently. Remember that? Remember that slogan? You'll own nothing and be happy? you just own nothing now, won't you? Yeah, you won't even be happy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is uh, talking about immigration, because the newest figures came out for the UK. Uh, half a million this year. That's net. Nets. Breadsticks. Not, I mean, not gross breadsticks. M- that is mad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we did a podcast about this a while back, where immigration is the reason you can't get a house if you're uh, you know, under 30, or under 35 yep. now in England. Um, yeah, too bad. Um, sucks, sucks to be you. Anyway, well, we'll move to the data here. We have uh, immigration being the highest on record of all time. I, I, literally of all time. Yes. I, there, I think the Norman conquests, even proportionally, are not as high. Oh, nowhere not, near. Not sure. <laughs> nowhere near. I like the, the, they, they estimate, Certainly in pure numbers, it's nowhere near. No, they estimate that maybe 100,000 Norman... Um, or, or Invaders. Like, not not no no not no no it's ten thousand roughly twelve thousand in the actual army but like over the course of like Norman migration to England possibly a hundred thousand and this that's is, a very upper limit. This is seven hundred thousand in one year. It's mad. Uh, for and people that's who, net as well five hundred thousand. We used to be on three hundred thousand just for reference for American viewers. I think yeah. it's seven hundred thousand. We get a million a year. What are you talking about? Yeah, oh, that's just legal. Um, so. For our normal figures of 300,000, you'd proportionally you'd have to triple the American immigration rate. So now we're at what, like, um, t- times times five? The immigration rate of the Americans, proportionally. There we are. Fantastic. That's two Lutons every year. Everybody loves Luton. Why not yeah, two there, more of them? There's like, what, 300,000 people in Swindon? Yeah. So. You know, the next uh, link here, we have the Telegraph breaking the news. Foreign students and their dependents could face curbs as net migration hits could, half a million. Could face curbs? Why? Why? They Why changed, don't we just have zero? They changed the headline. Oh, did they? I actually have the original headline written down, which is um, that the immigration levels have now surpassed levels even seen before Brexit. Yes. They got rid of that, because I suppose that was too incendiary. But <laughs> there you have it. They wrote in here, data from the Office of National Statistics show that net migration rose from 173,000 in the year to June 2021 to 504,000 in I the year for June 2022. I love it. When we're locked down with COVID, we still have net migration of 173,000 people. Nobody really knows how that's possible. But it was, apparently. Unbelievable. We can't go out. We can, nothing's open. 173,000 foreigners are like, yeah, I'm going to move to Britain. Pub and the UK government's like, yeah, exactly. The UK government's like, yeah, we're going to let it happen. I, but even on the lockdown, we can't apparently just just do the normal no. thing. Uh, the figures will raise concerns over the government's election manifesto pledge to bring net down net migration. Just concerns. <laughs> will it really? I don't, I don't know. That's no, no, no. speculation. I just I'm just gonna get my my clown wig and my red nose and go Hong Kong. You know, like <laughs> might raise concerns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> concerns. Like, like literally, they were like, "Are we gonna get down to the tens of thousands?" So like, actually, what we're really gonna do is record highs. Yeah, I love our concerns. I mean, to be frank, I mean, we've had terrorism now in response to this sort of situation. I mean, you may remember in Dover, yep. there was that guy who did yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, concerns. Yep. Just concerned citizens, I'm sure. A promise repeated by Rishi Sunak and Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, and told the Tory conference her ambition was to reduce it to hun- under 100,000. Well, you're the government. Just set it to zero. Well, it was the same commitment that they had made since... Um, can you remember? Well, it was probably for decades. 2010? Now. Yeah, was well, when yeah. they when they made that commitment and got in power. Oh. They made it for five more years before then, <laughs> and they hadn't got power. So they've been in power for twelve years. And so nearly twenty years. The conservatives are saying we're going to get it below. 100, give us five 000. more years, bro. We'll solve it, bro. <sighs> just just give us five more years, and trust me, I'll bring it down. Oh wait, it's got to five hundred thousand. They they could whoops. Have, they could at any point literally just put a put a complete moratorium on giving out yeah. visas or just women. Even well, they just could the, do that. Even just the just women thing. Yeah, but... Like, we would half it overnight. We would, yeah. Actually, more than half, because you then get rid of husbands bringing their wives there. And um, crime goes down. Yes. But they could do this anytime. They could literally do it tomorrow. They could do it today. They could do it yesterday. What? You'd be like, no, it's zeros. Love my zeros. This is like the Republicans own the president, the House, the Senate, yeah. and they've got like a 66% majority and just um, going to do nothing with it. However, it is understood that the Home Secretary ministers are pressing number 10 for the need of more measures to curb uneconomical legal migration. They're thinking about it, boys. Just just do it. But don't worry, Carl. They're thinking about it. I tell you what, if I was in control, <laughs> I would liquidate the Home Office. These There would be no one to apply to to get a visa. They, they think of the things they thought about. <laughs> They've not done them yet, but they're thinking about maybe yeah. doing them at some point in the future, perhaps if you re-elect them. These could include restrictions on the rights of students to bring dependents, a, which... Why, why have you got that right, anyway? A crackdown on those who do not complete their courses but remain in the UK. That's already illegal. There should already be a deportation order. 
But they're what? thinking about maybe they should start deporting people for committing why, a crime. Why do we need like 300,000 stu- foreign students here a year anyway? Well, it's almost like the uh, university system in this country is a leftist rigging machine that is propped up by foreign students. Good point. That's, that's, Good point. We can't lose that. Yeah, I well, know. That would be <laughs> tragic, wouldn't it? All those, all those professors, all those HR people at a university who would go without their yoga bars. Anyway, so uh, uh, a curb on foreign students. Who's going to serve my coffee in Pratt? <laughs> on uneconomic, low-quality courses as well. Something yep. I'm thinking of. Just thinking about it. Uneconomic, low-quality courses. What's that code for? Who woke, knows? Woke nonsense. Yeah. What, what? So the conservatives are starting to think about maybe we should do something about that. If you re-elect us, we might. God, I hate the conservatives so much. The salary threshold for skilled workers could also be raised. It's currently £25,000. So... I don't, I don't know what they're going to raise it to. Whatever. Who cares? They're not going to do it. Won't, that won't even happen. <laughs> no. The UNS figures showed that 1.1 million people came into the UK in the year of June 2022, an increase of 400 goddamn thousand. The separate Home Office figures, however, show that they had to risen by 1.4 million people. I love the way that they frame this. Like, well, they just came here and there was nothing we can do. It's just yeah. like, oh my God, it's an act of God. You know about there's some Indian tribes who yeah. say that they like sprouted from the earth? Yes. Yeah, that's what happened. I think well it's like it's it they talk about it like it's a hurricane or like it's the canadian weather. geese yeah. flying across just like well they, they there's just more geese here this year than normal it's just weird there was nothing we could do I'm sure they'll go back that's why we call them guest workers said germany <laughs> enjoying your donica babs lads anyway but the point there ons says it's 1.1 million home office says it's 1.4 oh. so that 500,000 figure is from the 1.1 right so it's actually about 300,000 more so it's actually 800,000 yeah it's 800,000 right. God. That's net breadsticks. Again. Just, oh, God, this is insane. Yeah. Who are they, in case you're wondering? Well, who you knows? Know, there's um, less annoyance about the people who are here, who are coming, but that doesn't make up for the <sighs> fact that you had a promise and you failed it yet again. So, students accounted for the biggest proportion, 277,000 coming in, nearly double the but previous year. That's still half a million, like, you know, mercenaries. Well, people who need housing, GPs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, infrastructure for roads, uh, the metro, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, these things also have to be built. Well, they'll never be built, they'll never be expanded even. A humanitarian and other family visas accounted for the second largest proportion of immigrants, 39% of them, at uh, a quarter of a million there. About 70,000 should be boat people. Mm-hmm. So, just 70,000. Yeah, it's a tiny tickets. drop in the ocean. That's, that's for one year as Less well. than a tenth of it is but the of, boat people. Of those numbers, uh, 90,000 Ukrainians who... You know, at least that was, you had to sponsor your house to do it. I'm sure no one's staying in the hotel. And at least they were probably mostly women. 74,000 Hong Kongers, actually welcome. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Thing is, you then have to but, count, okay, well, if we're going to let in 100,000 Hong Kongers this year. We probably don't need 100,000 Pakistanis. Nope. Because, um, why would we? Like, <laughs> why would we? <laughs> uh, surely the uh, immigrant making the coffee and prat argument is solved by all those Hong Kongers who were making coffee and prat, I'm sure. Mm. But the point being there that, uh, yeah, you have a target, you break it even more, and you don't think to adjust the figures and be like, well, we're not going to take the uneconomic migrants because we've got but Hong Kongers. There's just, no, no, we'll have both. There's just no limit to any of it. They're just like stamp, 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 every single thing that comes across their desk. 21,000 Afghans, or Britons returning from Afghanistan. This will be... Um, That's such a tiny benefit. number. Thing it's is, such a tiny number compared to the rest of it. That's what we got out of the war. 456 yep. dead and uh, 21,000 Afghans living here. Yep. Oh, that's this year alone. They'll be joining 80,000 Afghans who already live here. So that brings oh, us up right, to okay. 100,000 Afghans now living in the UK. Oh, good. Which um, I'm sure will go swimmingly. It went so well with the Pakistani immigration project. It's um, there's, They're not at the bottom of the earnings list at all. Anyway, separate home office data. Oh, that's, that's the issue with the Pakistani immigration. It's the only one I can mention on YouTube. Right. Also released on Thursday, showed a number of asylum applications in this year has uh, has gone to a two-decade high. 72,000 people. Asylum was granted in 77% of cases, uh, n- rising to 98% of those from Afghanistan, Eritrea, and Syria. And now you can't get a four-star hotel anywhere in the land. Thing is, that number there, 77% of cases were granted. That's not because 77% of them actually reach the definition of an asylum seeker Hmm. if you were to talk to them because you can go and talk to them yourself you just go down to your local hotel have a word and talk to these people and you will know that they all came from france and therefore don't reach the definition of an actual asylum seeker yeah the reason they're approved is because it's easier probably yeah because otherwise i'm telling you man uh, otherwise they've got like now we've got to get rid of them yeah and the deportation scheme barely works of those was a certain way 33 percent who have to be deported uh roughly about nine percent of that 33 percent will be deported so all those people who are here illegally, they'll just remain here, just in the black market. 
The backlog of cases waiting for an initial decision at all has now reached 122,000. Uh, sorry, that was previous year. It's now to 140,000. <laughs> Fantastic. Just smile. A literal joke of makeup yeah. at this point. Uh, the ONS even tells us how many Brits have left in the in the next tab. Uh, they say 90,000 Brits left. That That's year. in Britain. So, um, yep. We can now update the graph. The little graph I've been keeping. Oh, yeah. Of the foreign-born population. Because we now have another year to add, don't we? If you can see on the far right there, um, you see that gradient. That looks healthy. Yeah, I'm definitely so, looking at the far right these days. It's, I it's, it's almost 90% <laughs> in, the, in the upward direction there. Uh, that's yeah, mad. That's a single year. That's, so, so we're now up to, I think it's 17.8% foreign born in this country. The greatest rise ever in a single year. There we have it. We can also track that if we just continue the curve, just to the 2031 census. We can check how many people will be foreign born in England and Wales by 2031. That's, that's uh, a whole... Nine years away, in nine and, years' and time. That's, that's just born in another country. That's yes. not the descendants, the second, third, or fourth generation yeah. children of these immigrants in these ethnic enclaves. In nine years, of those only who are born in a foreign country, it will be about 25% for the whole nation. That's insane. England will literally not exist. Uh, we have the graph before as well, if you go to the next one here. This is the immigration graph of yeah. just uh, how's it been going. And as you can see, something happened in the 1990s. <laughs> we are still yet to know what. Uh, I, a man at GB News will come and let us know once he figures it out. Uh, now we have the updated version, which I made yesterday. It's off the chart. God. Like, there's the chart. It only goes up to yeah. 400,000. So, it's just... Yeah. I, I had to put it there. There you are. To be fair, I think you put it a bit too low as well. For slightly, maybe. I mean, it literally should, should be double. I don't think I even include well, illegals that we don't have. So, yeah. there's that. So we're going well. Thanks. Thanks, Conservatives. We'll go to the uh, controlled opposition, who even started signalling that they're opposed to <laughs> endless migration. That's how bad it is. The Socialist Party is like, whoa, 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 whoa. we can't say that we want more of this. They will, if they get yeah. in power, obviously. But they, they publicly, Keir Starmer had to give a statement saying, maybe we, that should be lower. Maybe the Conservatives have gone mad. Yeah, R Rashid Sunak, Rashid Sunuk, oh, yeah. as he was referred to by Joe yeah. Biden, um, says that he's uh, he he's not going to deal with it. As in, you know, there's boat people that we have to deal with, the plebs all over the country. It's hardly his problem, is it, Callum? Oh no, literally, <clears throat> his constituency isn't his problem. No, every other constituency has to have their hotels shut down. His, not so much. Average out. Richmond man. If you go to the next link here, we can see David reporting uh, the Alton Court Hotel in. Uh, Rishi Sunak's constituency. Oh. They, they were marked to have 72 asylum seekers oh, in this really? beautiful establishment. Uh, and it was cancelled for no reason. Weird. Mm. Amazing, that. Anyone who's watched Yes Minister knows how that happened. Yeah. Which is just the Prime Minister doesn't want it. Yes. It's, we, we, we've looked at the uh, Transport Supremo and it's not happening. We also have Liverpool MP. <laughs> I mean, this is the first black yeah, Liverpool yeah, MP yeah. who's um, totally black, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, but she uh, came out with a statement that she supports refugees. Yeah. She just doesn't want to pay for them. Nope. No. She no, wants... no, no. You wanted the refugees, you got them. But there's no funding, no consultation with the council and unsuitable accommodation. <laughs> we, we welcome Liverpool refugees. sounds like a dive. Yeah. Sounds like a you problem. Yeah. I, look, any MP who tweeted refugees welcome it yep. should be getting busloads off. Lisa Nandy. In their constituency. If you had any spine, just drop them off. Make them homeless. I don't care. What difference does it make? They were homeless in Cali. Mm. You've not changed anything. They started homeless and they're homeless. Anyway, also Faulty Towers has now fallen. If you're wondering, <laughs> Torquay is gone. Really? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Oh, um, this is actually quite sad. Quiet seaside town of Torquay is the latest to have all of its hotels filled with illegal immigrants. Good luck going on holiday next year. Yeah, for people who don't know, um, Torquay is a, a beautiful holiday destination, yeah. fantastic place, and has <coughs> become a meme in British culture thanks to Faulty Towers being set there, mm -hmm. and um, was has been ever since enjoyed as a holiday resort. Yeah, even if it's a bit, you know, uh, it's very British. I love it. That's yeah. why. I, and now it's not. Now it's a refugee town. That was never a statement in the English language, in British English. Refugee no. town. Never had that before. Now it's a thing. Five-star hotels are now being used in Westminster. Why, why wouldn't you? We have here well, some... I can think of lots of reasons why I wouldn't. <laughs> well, you've run out of four-star hotels, so we've got to go off a star. <laughs> oh, yes, are. we're just going to have to keep going up, lads. This individual found a five-star hotel in Westminster, because remember, it's Westminster. It's incredibly rich. But there's only five-star hotels left. So they've got to use those. Uh, these people, they, they wouldn't say how they got here. It's the person recording. She asked them, and they just went, oh, I don't want to talk about it. It's not a good uh, talk. Direct quote. Why are they here? Why are they here? Just they deport are. them. The mercenary adventurers just yeah. deport them. There's also a £20 million apartment complex that's just been finished. Now used to house them as well. 
Uh, the reason for this... You, we, can we click on that second image? Just so you can see uh, the quality. This is what was being advertised to potential renters. Um, but we need the housing for uh, illegal beggars. We're paying for this. Criminals. So, um, yeah, th you might wonder, how does that happen? And the thing is, because, of course... Well, the Home Office goes to companies like Serco mm. and says, can you solve this for us? And Serco goes, you bet we can, as long as you pay enough. Yeah, ka-ching. Yeah, and the payouts are ridiculous. And they're like, okay, well, what's 14 billion between friends? Uh, well, what's corruption between friends? Yeah. If you go to the next one here, we can see Serco put out this call, calling all landlords. I remember knowing this at the time. I don't know why I didn't bring it up. And they were literally just calling up every landlord in the country saying, whatever your apartment, whatever your housing, yeah. we will pay you gangbusters if you just let yeah. us operate your housing. Like, here's the contract. You have to do nothing. We will deal with it. And you get a load of money, just just take the br bribery cash. <sighs> Remember, um, what is it? There's, there's that movie where uh, Yuri over there goes back to Ukraine and just steals loads of AKs and sells them. Um, Lord of War. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's a great movie. Yeah. And um, his uh, uncle, who's the Soviet <coughs> commander of the base, yeah. says, well, someone will figure it out. You know, I used to have 40,000 AKs, now I have 10,000. Yeah. And I need to order more, apparently. Yeah. And he says, well, just cut them in. Good point. Or if you just cut in all the landlords. Good point. Corruption will never end. That's what will happen. And they are incredibly generous. And we have more evidence of that from Nigel Farage, who has decided to uh, interview yet another patriot prophet, as I'm going to call these people, because they deserve more praise than mm. we can possibly give them. This individual couple, they're uh, running a hotel. They were offered 500 grand to destroy the neighborhood. And they turned it down. Good for them. Let's play the clip Good and God. hear about their story. Okay, we was offered £132,000 every 13 weeks. So roughly just over half a million pound a year. The reason we turned it down was because of our morals and beliefs. Um, when we bought this hotel, there, there wasn't any migrants or illegal immigrants in, in this town. Um, and within a year, the whole scene has changed. Skegness is a, a seaside resort, uh, and it's been a hub for tourism for generations. Um, and this, people come here for the beach, the sea, arcades, donkey rides, amusement parks, et cetera, et cetera. And bringing so many migrants into, into this town is going to put tourism off. It'll become a ghost town. It'll become known as a refugee town. The, the stipulation was, was, was to close the, the whole hotel down, the bar, the restaurant, the rooms. Um, we've got 10 staff on site at the moment. We'd have gone down to one member of staff. Uh, we only had to change the laundry once a week and to provide one basic meal. That was it. We just, we would never ever be a part of the contribution of what is going on. We just wouldn't, we would rather lose everything and be able to sleep at night knowing that we didn't contribute to what's going on. Good for them. Yeah. This is not the only story like this I've seen. I, I, I saw um, another one the other day. It was this lovely old looking hotel. I played it too. It was that the one you played? Yeah. And the guys say, well, I can't, you know, the local community would never forgive me. Well, you've been loyal to us. Yeah. Why would I not be loyal to them? Yeah. And they were offered, I think it was a million quid, that yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. again, think about that for a minute, because this is about 2% of our economy now. Yeah. That's that's the other point to mention. God. And this is only expanding. This pyramid scheme that people think could just make more money, those in Serco and the Home Office who are, I think, just taking bribes. I, that's well, honestly what I believe at this point. This whole thing is a bribe. And, and the thing is, because you steal taxpayers' money, okay? You take it to yourself. You don't deal it out to your friends to import foreign... Well, beggars. Occupants, yeah. And uh, you, you you launder this through the hotel industry for one point, if not the landlords. And the deal is that all the local people who own these hotels have to fire all the British workers because you don't need them. As they said, you only yeah. need one cleaner. There would have yeah. been 20 people off in that hotel. You think there must be, you know, several hundred of these yeah. at this point. So that's, that's thousands of people out mm. of work, no longer paying taxes either. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a cannibalistic machine this destroying our economy. insane. Yeah. We have Nigel Farage saying that the uh, occupied government deserves to be completely wiped out in the oh, next yeah. link here, which oh, yeah. um, get on with it, mad. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. Sent a, he sent an email to every party member saying that he didn't waste 25 years of his life for them to destroy it. Yeah. So. Go and join the Reform Party. Go support Nigel Farage. Let's get rid of the Conservatives. They have to go. If, if, if that's what you want to do. And the thing is, I, I do hinge that personally on just he has to get back into the game, annoyingly. I know yeah. a lot of people don't trust him for reasons, but it's just uh, who cares? that's how it, British politics works. Look, look, look where we are. You know, He's the literally the only politician we have yeah. who's like we're going to do something about this okay fine we're well, in the public view as well yeah, yeah, like yeah. everyone he's got it. the name you know. but we got the next one as well the uh the leftists are complaining that some people died trying to cross the channel now <laughs> i, I nature just... herself is rising up to defend the country since our government won't yeah they didn't like france so they tried to flee it understandable but if you just go through the legal port of entry you don't die you don't get a darwin award 
Anyway, you might think the worst takes from all of this situation that continues to get worse and worse every single goddamn day yeah. might be from the leftist media. Maybe. Yeah, I went to the Guardian. No. No, completely normal reporting. This whole article's boring. Really? It's just them stating the facts. I mean, gleefully, but still. Hmm. Like, nothing, nothing bad. Which means we're going to have to go to the bad take machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's Tom Harwood said about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, was, I thought we'd end this off trying to make ourselves gleeful. So we have here Tom Harwood. I'm not sure why the entire media is going along with the claim that Vote Leave promised specific migration numbers going down. It's like, what? Wait, what do you mean? As if people voted Leave because they wanted the migration to go up. I voted Leave so we could have hundreds of thousands of more Pakistani immigrants move here. Look at, he says the campaign was about taking control. Yes, to yeah. reduce. To, no, to, to increase it. Did you, I want to take control to finally abolish all restrictions on immigration. Yeah, it was it was unfair Stop. that only the entire EU could come here without yeah, our say. It's so dumb. He also has the future one, which is a student should not even be classified as migrants anymore in his next week. Why? Don't they occupy space? Don't they live in houses? There's no, there's no reasoning given. It's just they shouldn't. That's just... Again, what? why? Do, does he I, think if, they just... Like, what, what's he think? They... they Seems like they live in pods or something. And, and if the students don't, why do work visas count then? Like, why not get rid of all work visas from yeah. the statistics? Why not get rid of all foreigners? As if they don't occupy space and use up services. This is such a stupid argument. The dumbest thing I've, I've ever read. Guido Fawkes, someone at Guido Fawkes decided to also take this on. I don't know what's infecting Westminster, but stop drinking the tap water. That's for sure. Why? I, why I don't would know. students be removed from migrant things? They are migrants. It's also the case, you know when they leave... Why are you trying to reduce them artificially? You know when they leave... <laughs> the plan being that once you're done with your degree, you yeah, go back. Yeah. That's when you get reduced from the immigration figure. Okay, well, because you're out, you're literally, you know, logic. Yeah, uh, get destroy that. Don't want that. Kind of that. Anyway, but a fellow with a Rwandan flag in his bio did actually put all of the situation best. Uh, <laughs> just gonna <laughs> take it from Max. Just send them machete emojis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like this mini rebellion of just adding Rwandan yeah. flags. However, he says, uh, thanks to the wonders of UK immigration policy, you will now compete with the world's richest in housing markets and the world's poorest on the labour market and lose your culture in the process. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Uh, and we'll end this off just by mentioning uh, ethnicity data. That's out in four days. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward Tune to in. that. Yeah, I'll be on Tuesday. And the last thing to mention, which is um, to try and cheer us up, could be worse, lads. Could oh, Someone is having a worse day than us. Oh, good. I'll just to sidetrack this. Uh, this is uh, some individual here who is, if you click on the first image there, um, ex-NHS doctor, now die. Oh, obviously sane po person, yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, what are the, what's their complaint today? Uh, if you go to the next image. Um, today I gave a talk at Bristol University on gender inclusion healthcare. Attendees were, as I understand it, health professionals, the Q&A section had over 45 transphobic questions, around 80% of the questions. I love the picture of him biting his knuckle. It's, it's just like such childishness. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I was biting my biting my hand. Look at the bite marks on my hand. You didn't even puncture the skin, you pussy. No, the, the questions came in immediately, without warning, and were consistently in response to slides. Was... They were not evidence-based. It's a question. No. The is question we, is not evidence based. Let's check no, I out guess it's not. This dude's slides to try and cheer us up after all that. Go on, then. Just to just see. It, they're insane, in case you're wondering. We go, we go to slides and we can see them. Uh, we have him uh, giving us Trans Gandalf. Quote here from Trans Gandalf Passing is subjective. And it is not necessarily the goal of transitioning. Then why are you transitioning? Anyway, you look hot either way. Yeah, right. right. Okay, there we are. I, I hope that cheered you up with the black pill. <sighs> no, not terribly. Well, I tried. Otherwise, um, let's compete for the world's richest for housing, the world's poorest for labour, and uh, lose our culture in the process. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium hangouts we do, this one on Carl's rant about Generation X versus Generation Z. If you'd like to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you, and goodbye.